Welcome back to the channel, good friends. Brian from Apex Detail. Today we're working on the Escalade the Flip car once more, uh, getting it ready to uh, get it out on the lot, get it for sale, and make a profit. We're working on the seat belts and the headliner, amongst other things today, so I thought I would share that process with you. This is one of many ways to clean up a uh, real messy seat belt. I've seen worse, but this one has some deep stains. First thing we want to do is grab some some uh, fabric softener, any type, and spray it onto the fabric. These types of fabrics, these and the entry level carpets you see in some vehicles, especially Teslas, entry level, very tight woven, stiff fibers, you want them to relax so you can uh, move them slightly to clean uh, amongst the fibers, get a deep clean. I will follow that up after letting it soak for a few minutes with the steamer and that relaxes them even more. The warmth, the steam, the moisture. Every once in a while, the steamer alone can make the seat belt or the fabric or upholstery you're working on uh, get clean enough that it's acceptable. However, with the deeper stains that we have in this belt, it's going to take a bit more. We'll grab the Kraken. This is an all-purpose cleaner. Uh, we just reviewed and showcased this on the channel. Uh, this is a new release, and it's been working fantastic. We're going to get the cleaner into the fibers. We'll soak both sides and we'll let it dwell for a few minutes. This is cut five to one, by the way. After a few minutes of dwell time, we grab our drill brush and we simply get to work. You can see where we're making progress. Yes, you can pull the seat belt out and try to secure it and use a pressure washer outside. Um, but that only gets so far. You have about a good eight inches from where the belt uh, bolts onto the base of the seat to where it comes out through the doorway where it's still gonna be dirty and you have to use this process anyways. But for the rest of it, sure, if you wanna use a pressure washer, it's a quick way of doing it. I don't like to do it because the belt will flap against the door uh, and you just don't wanna have any type of damage like that. So this is the process we'll use. Since we were deep cleaning, agitating with the brush, I'm going to hit it with the cleaner one more time and then grab a microfiber, mop up any residue or uh, bits of, of grease and dirt that I can from the material. The microfiber also helps to start the drying process. I will leave it hung up to the door here or stabilized outside the vehicle so it can dry for the rest of the day or overnight. And it will look uh, a nice uh, bright tan uniform color. 
and does a fantastic job. Here are your before and afters. We simply continue that process with all of the seat belts and move on to the headliner, really the only thing left in the interior we need to address. A couple things brushed up against it and got it dirty. We don't need a lot. So we're going to grab the Sonax Alcantara and Upholstery Foamer. This is a dry foam. It will not oversaturate. And you do not want to oversaturate the headliner. It's not held up by much, guys. If you don't want it falling down on your head, just use this dry foam. Get up in there with a microfiber. Uh, get it onto the material, let it dwell a little bit, and then do a twist motion with the microfiber, and it works very well. And then anything we see that is uh, staining that headliner upholstery is addressed the same way. Let's move on. We have some more things to address. Some little things. Driver's side mirror, uh, cracked and just damaged. All we need to do is pop this outside cover off of the mirror. We just need a regular screwdriver, the new glass or the mirror itself, and then a few pry tools. The softer plastic pry tools are best so we do not damage the plastic and chip the paint. This mirror is heated, it has a turn signal, it's powered, so there will be connections, wire connections to look out for. We are getting close to the decon, the paint correction, and the protection, the restoration of the plastic trim, also the wheels. However, we want to get some of these smaller mechanical um, issues out of the way first because we're handling the surface of the vehicle and we want to get that done before the correction just in case we do any type of light marring or scratching. With the cover removed, we can get in there with a flathead screwdriver. The mirror needs to be lifted up off of its perch. There are uh, four little plastic clips and it will easily be removed from there and we can unplug the wire connections. And then of course with the new driver's side mirror we reverse the process and get it back together. And now we can test the directional pad to make sure it's functioning properly. There's a turn signal in there and it's also a heated mirror.
Something else I want to address so I can show you other issues we have taken care of. There was a little bit of an exhaust leak, so we re-drilled and put new bolts into the manifold. We have the cam sensor. Uh, again, there's a new compressor that was on there for the air conditioning when we got it, so that is uh, one thing we didn't have to address. I do want to get a pulley on there, a pulley tensioner. But first, let's take care of this degraded ground wire. This is wreaking havoc on the electrical system, and it's making some of the lights on the dash come on and off periodically. And we can attach it straight to the alternator bracket. All you need for this job, 10 millimeter. You need a wire brush to clean up and a six foot cable of your choice. With it attached to the bracket, I can run it up through the inside of the fender well, giving it enough slack because it will be attached to the engine, which will uh, shimmy and shake and will tilt as you accelerate. And we'll go up to the firewall where it connects to that ground wire. Again, we're going to grab the wire brush and clean up the best we can before we attach it on the other side. That will do it. We have it run over from the bracket into uh, an existing uh, wire harness clamp. 
and into a second one and I may use a couple zip ties to secure it even more but for now I want to take it for a test drive and indeed the uh, dash light does not light up like a Christmas tree normally it was the stabilizer and the Stabila track and the suspension light that was coming on but it's straightened out now and we're good to go this has been Brian from Apex Detail and we'll catch you in the next video.